Welcome back to Visual Anthology's Physical Inventory Training, or PI for short. In this chapter, we'll review the steps needed to prepare for downloading scanner batches from the portable rental scanners. At this time in version 5.14, we support the CS1504 and CS2000 scanners. We recommend that you connect and test your scanners immediately, at least a few days before you'll begin the PI process. Decide on the machine that you'll drive the PI from. This is the machine that is the easiest for everyone in the store to get to where they're going to be downloading their scanner batches and is the best location for the person who's going to be driving the PI from. Bear in mind that only one person can be using the PI module, at least that particular PI number, at any given time. If you've had to move a machine to a temporary location, you'll also want to double check and make sure that your database of books or your CD fetch is still functioning. Oftentimes, if you've had to move a machine, the mapping is incorrect. So to double check your settings, go to Tools, Options, External Data to double check your settings for your CD fetch. Again, if you've had to move your machine, you may want to make sure that that CD fetch is still working. Otherwise, if you scan in an item that's not in your system and we attempt to fetch it, but these settings are not correct, you could get an error message. If you're having any problems setting up the CD fetch or if you have any questions, you can contact support and they can help you out. Since you're going to be using those portable rental scanners, the CS1504 and CS2000, we do recommend that you print out and keep a copy handy of the connecting and using documents. There's one for each of those model of scanners. Keep those documents handy. That document covers things such as what kinds of batteries those scanners need, how many scans that each model will hold, any special usage details you might need, and troubleshooting information. It is very important to have that document with you when you're doing the PI process. This will help you um, handle any questions that might come up in the, during the process. In order for you to get those scanners working, the first thing you'll need to do is connect them. If you're using the Symbol CS2000 scanner, this is an old, older model with a serial connection, that's a 9-pin connection, you'll want to have your computer shut down, and usually you'll have a 9-pin connection port, a serial connection port on the back of the machine somewhere. Just plug that in, tighten up the thumb screws, and then turn the computer back on. The CS2000 scanners do not require any important drivers to be installed, so with those you'll be pretty much ready to go once we couple, cover a couple of steps that show you how to select your scanner type and enter in an authorization code so you can download the scanner batches. For those of you who are using the CS1504 scanner, there is a driver that does need to be installed. And when you first boot up your computer after you've connected it, it should just be a USB connection. There will be a wizard that may come up for you. Now, a special note about those CS1504 scanners. When you get them, uh, when they're purchased by default, um, the symbol company will send a cable with them that is actually a serial connection. But we have decided that we want to use their additional adapter to make it go from serial to USB. This special adapter is about four or five inches long. It needs to be connected to the serial end of the cable that comes with the scanner. If you've purchased your own scanners, you have to have that additional adapter. You can check the Symbol website for more information on that. Um, but basically, you'll connect that USB connection on the Symbol 1504 cable. You'll connect that to your computer, boot up your computer, and you may come up with a hardware wizard the first time. Now, because my computer's been used a couple of times already for doing this setup, mine's not going to come up with a driver automatically, but I can show you what you should expect to see. Basically, I can get in and show you how to double check that driver here. Let me just arrange my screen a moment. When you first boot your computer up, you will likely get a wizard something like this. This is a hardware wizard where it is detected, the computer at least, has detected a new piece of hardware has been plugged in and it knows there is a driver that it needs to use to run that device. Now in the case of the Symbol CS2000s, you don't have to worry about this. With the Symbol 15, CS1504 scanners, you will need to do this driver install. It's relatively easy to do. And you should be on Anthology version 5.12.021 or higher. 
because we have put that driver into the anthology folder for you. There's no having to need for getting a disk or anything like that. So once you've booted your computer up after connecting that 1504 cable, you may get a wizard screen something like this. And in this case, this wizard wants to actually connect to, win to the internet to search for the driver. And in this case, it's not necessary because I have the driver already loaded on my machine. So for this one, I'm going to say, no, not this time. It's not necessary to connect to Windows Update to get that software driver. I'll say next. And so now it wants to locate that software somewhere on the hard drive of this machine. Now, by default, it wants to install it automatically for me, but I know where those files are exactly. This is what you're going to want to do. You want to tell it, I'm going to install from a list or a specific location. Once you click on the radio button for that option, do next. And now here's the next window where it's asking you, OK, where is this file? We don't want the system to search for this file exactly, not the entire drive. We know exactly where that file is. Now, in this case, my Windows is remembering the last location of where it found that driver. And this is exactly the right path, if I was on my server, which I am, that it should be looking in. When you first get in, yours may be actually set to like this, so that it wants to search for your CD-ROM drive. But you want to simply uncheck that, check the Include This Location in the Search button. Now, yours may not be showing the exact same path here. So for you that need to change this, or if you're on, say, one of your workstations, you need to hit the Browse button over here, and that will bring up a Browse to Folder window. Now, on my computer, because I am on my server, my anthology by default, unless I changed it when I did the original install, by default, my installation is underneath the local disk C drive, which is under my computer, local disk. I'll scroll down a little bit. It's underneath Program Files, and then finally underneath Anthology, and a little bit further down, it is under the Tools folder. So when I click on that folder and highlight it, I'll click on OK. It has now memorized that path for me, and it's saved that information. I could do Next from here. For those of you that maybe are on a workstation, and you're unsure of where that data path is back to your anthology folder, there's a real easy way to find that out. Let me scooch this over so I can get to my anthology icon. You probably have an anthology icon on your desktop that you use to start up the program. So if you're unsure of exactly where your path to your anthology data is, if you simply right click on top of your anthology icon and do properties, you will get the anthology icon properties. And notice we have a series of tabs up here. In particular, this shortcut tab shows me where is my anthology data loaded. Now, because I'm on a workstation, I may have a different path than you might have if you're looking somewhere else. But in this case, my anthology, my data is really stored somewhere else, a little bit of a special setup. So it knows that my data is on D drive underneath the anthology folder. But for the most of you, that window is going to show you something like G colon slash program files anthology, or perhaps just G colon slash val.exe. Make a note of what drive letter that's looking in and what those first couple of slashes are, because that'll tell you the general path that you need to get to. So if I need to change drive letters when I hit Browse, typically I will have my My Computer window, or actually the My Computer option. I'll expand that out. Here's all the drive letters that I have. So if I needed to go to my D drive or perhaps my G drive, maybe it was shared from somewhere else, I could click on that drive letter and get to it. But in this case, I'm on my server, so my data files that I'm after really are underneath my anthology folder under Tools. That is where those drivers for the CS1504 are being kept. Once I've got that path set the way I want it, I'll do Next. And now it's thinking. Now basically, mine is saying it didn't find any better driver to use, but yours would finish from here. So you could just say Finish once your window comes up, and it would install that driver. 
If your cable is connected, you might hear a beep, you might hit, see a flash on the scanner, but otherwise it should do that installation for you pretty easily. If you have any questions or problems doing this driver installation, just call support, the main number, anybody can help you out. That's why we recommend you try hooking up your scanners and testing them at least a couple of days before you do your PI so you're not in a rush. From here, now that you've gotten your driver installed, the next step is to actually input an authorization code. This is something you'll do for either the CS2000s or the CS1504s. This authorization code is something we'll provide to you if you've rented the scanners or if you've purchased your own scanners, it's something you'll need to buy from us as well. Um, that code allows you for a short period of time to download scanner batches. And then often that code is good for maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of months, depending on what arrangement you made with us. Usually you'll e get an email with that authorization code. You might get an email something like this. And usually somewhere in the body of that email is this big long string of numbers and letters. Everybody will have a unique number. You can't reuse codes. They are only good for a certain amount of time. And in fact, once you do get your email, or if we sent it on a piece of paper, uh, in the case of this where I have an email that I will copy my code just by dragging and highlighting that code. I can do a right click and copy. And now that that code is in the memory of the computer, I can go input that authorization code. So to do that, you'll go to inventory control, go to physical inventory, and I don't have any set up right now, but that's okay. I'll go to my actions menu. And the first thing I need to do is let's specify the scanner that we're using. In this case, I'm going to use the symbol CS1504. There is also the symbol CS2000. And you notice there's a third one here, which we've discontinued using the Flick scanner. That's something you can ignore. So you're either going to use the CS1504 or 2000 in this case. Once you've selected the scanner that you use, do F10 save. And now we can input that very important authorization code. Go back up to Actions. Go to Enter Review License for Scanning. And now I'm just going to simply do a right click and paste. There's that big long string of numbers. Notice it is case sensitive. So I do have to type it in exactly as it was sent to me or paste it in from my email, whichever works for you. But once I've gotten that very important code in, do F12 Post. And it's going to tell you up here how long that license is valid for. Now, mine is only a couple of days, but yours may be for a week or longer. So you'll know that you have a certain window of time in which to use that license with. At this point, I've done my driver install. I've put in my authorization code. I've selected my scanner. That's really about all I need to do to get ready to use that CS2000 or CS1504 um, scanner. Now, in the next chapter, we're going to cover, in Chapter 3 at least, we're going to cover creating a new physical inventory. That's for folks who are either doing the manual or the rental scanners, too. So everybody should be watching the Chapter 3 on creating a new PI. That should do it for now.